In this video, I'm going to show you how to stop the bunch tight end in Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. And if you've never been to my YouTube channel before, my channel is all about how to become a better Madden player in Madden 21. And the way that I do that is through studying the best players in the game, through practicing myself, and through sharing different tips and strategies that I learn along the way with you guys. And so, if you want to get better, I would highly encourage you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Now, um, in today's video, it's actually interesting because I run Bunch Tight End. Bunch Tight End is my favorite offense in the entire game. And I'm not going to say that it's impossible to stop, but it's really, really hard to stop. And so today, we're taking a deep dive into a concept um, that can really help you when defending the bunch tight end. So um, this is out of my 335 wide defensive ebook, which if you want to get a free sample to that, that's in the description. And if you want to get the entire defense, um, that is also in the description. The sample, I'm sorry, is in my text messages. You have to text me for a free sample. So my number is in the top of 10 corner. But anyway, um, here's my adjustments. And we're going to be talking, as you probably guessed, about the cover four quarters. The cover four quarters is the best defense in Madden right now, guaranteed. You can book it. The reason why is because it just does the best job. So, cover four quarters. And what we're going to talk about really quickly here is a couple of different things that you can do from this. So, the first adjustment that I like to do is I like to pinch my defense, and then I almost always will shade coverage down and shade coverage up. From that point, what you're going to see is I'm going to religiously go ahead and put Kader Holman into a seam flat. Almost every single time, he will go into a seam flat. It's almost a non-negotiable. On this back side, I will do the same thing. I almost put them all. I will almost always put both of them in seam flats, um, and that's just the way that I like to do it. From that point, I like to go ahead and put this. Uh, Amos right here, I like to put him into man coverage on one of the two receivers um, on the outside of the left side of the screen. So normally it's going to be Devontae Adams. Sometimes it's Vada Scantling, but normally it's Devontae Adams because Devontae Adams is the problem child. He's the problem receiver in this offense. And that's pretty much all I'll do. That's it. I don't deep half on this left side. I actually don't. And the reason why is because the number one way that people are going to beat your quarters is through something like this. Um, and what you'll see here, this is the number one way, as you can see right there. Now, if you notice, Perry Nickerson actually gets back on that ball relatively well. So you could deep path if you wanted to. You don't have to, okay? But to be safe, we'll show you it with a deep path. Another thing I like to do is I like to inside third out of this in particular defense. Um, and the reason why is I just think it plays it a little bit better. Inside thirds are definitely something that is... Um, they're definitely a glitchy zone. Um, they don't always do what you want them to do. Let's just say that. But that is something that you can try. Now, again, here we go. So, real quick, I want to talk about talk through um, a cover a coverage um, a covered cover quarters uh, beater. That's tight end corner, and they're just going to streak triangle. That's why we man him up. You see, there's the jam, and then there's the press following him, uh, or the jam, and then there's the man coverage following him. They're not going to be able to throw the ball to Devontae Adams. Really, the goal with this defense is to kind of try to neutralize the slot. If you can neutralize the slot, you can really do um, a lot of damage against this, this defense or this offense. So um, that's kind of the primary reason for this coverage shell here on the left side of the screen, on the left side of the screen. Now let's talk about the cover, the beater. Um, let's, let's talk about the quarters beater from this. So uh, tight end corner. And then all we're going to do is we're going to streak uh, triangle smart route here. And if you watch, the square receiver, now if I try to throw him to the outside, you see he's not going to get open. It's going to get intercepted with that middle third. The middle third, um, you know, again, it's it's. there's a lot of debate about what zone in the middle. You know, do you use a middle third? Do you use an inside quarter? Do you use a deep half? Like, what do you do? The problem with the deep half, for me, is it gets exploited against curl flat corner. So, and what I mean by that is it leaves the middle of the field it just leaves the middle of the field open. Like, let me give you an example. So I'm going to deep half here. Watch this. I'm going to deep half. And I don't want to have to use her in the middle. I don't I don't like it at all. So I'm going to do that deep half. And then I'm going to do that. And then what you're going to notice here, again, I'm going to stand right here. And again, we're going to use the seam flat. So now what I want you to watch is I'm going to run tight end corner. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to curl. 
in double streaks. Watch this right here. Does okay. Does okay. The other trick of this defense, though, and something that people don't talk about a lot, is motion. Motion changes how things play things, right? Um, let me give you an example. Let's talk about everyone's favorite play. And I'll be honest with you, it's one of my favorite plays, too. I actually don't think it's the best play in Bunch Tight End, though. Um, but it's PA boot over. So let's talk about that for just a second. And the, the only thing I want to talk about is the delay fade. That's the only thing I want to hit on. And I want to be able to use her. So I'm going to basically take this guy and man him up on circle. Let's just do that. That's fine. And I just want you to watch how the defense plays. Okay. So PA boot over. I'm going to double team so I can roll out. And just watch this. And we'll talk about it in a second. So if you see the out, so see that right there? This is a problem for me. Now, as you see, that cross man does do a good job of playing that crosser. But I want to dive into practice mode. And talk, this is my this is the biggest problem with quarters against bunch tight end right here. Watch this corner. Okay, watch. Snap of the ball. Watch where he goes. He comes back. He comes back. He comes back. And he goes and crosses here. Now, if I were to play traditional quarters, that would not happen, right? These two, these two corners over here are picking their nose on this play. Look, they're not guarding anybody. They're not doing anything for anybody. They're doing nothing. So now, let's take it a step farther. That's why I generally like to leave the quarters... Because now, let's, let's show you the same play. And you'll see a very different result. PA cross, watch. Now that's more of what we're used to. That's more of what we're used to. And if you think about the problem receiver, that there's two problem receivers from bunch tight end. Because let's just show you something real quick. So let's say we do this, this setup right here. Now what you would think, what the average Joe would think, and I would too, is that we're gonna have a, we're gonna we're gonna have some problems with this defense. Okay, um, tight end corner or not tight end corner? I'm sorry. Um, let's just use PA boot over. We're going to have some problems. That's what we think, right? So watch. I want you to watch Tavon Austin and watch the safety on the right. He should go get him. And you see here he goes and gets him. Perfect. The reason that bunch tight end causes so many problems is because is because of the different types of routes and where they're going on the field. To me, that's what causes the problems. Because it's not, a, like, it's not as simple. I can't just man him up. You know what I mean? I can't just man up circle. Watch watch what happens if I do that. So I've got circle manned up everywhere he goes. Watch. Watch what happens. PA boot over. Dot. See what I'm saying? That's a problem. That's a major, major problem. Okay? Um, I can't, I can't. So the slot is kind of the problem. There, there's just a lot of problems with this, with this offense. Okay? The bottom line is there's a lot of problems. Um, now what I would do is I would do something like this here. And I want to show you one thing out of curl flat corner really quickly. Uh, I think I messed up the routes. So if you watch here, watch this out route right here. Watch this motion out. See that? That's a problem. <laughs> right? Right? That's a problem. So there's multiple issues. Um, there's, mo there's multiple issues with how quarters plays from this. Now, again, some of it is based on what they do, the if this and that formula. If they're just running PA boot over every play, cover four quarters stock does a pretty good job. Like, does a pretty good job. You don't even need to put the seam flats there. Like, this will do fine. Um, seam flats, I personally like them. I think they play stuff really well. Like, if you watch here, watch this quarter. See that? See how I play? I mean, he doesn't quite get there, but he's kind of in the area. The other thing you have to make sure that you're always doing against PA boot over is you have to make sure that you always, always, always pass commit. If you don't pass commit, you're correct. Like, it's not a good strategy not to pass commit. But I like it like this. I mean, I'm okay. Like, if I see square run deep, I'm almost okay giving that up. Like, 
everything else that you can do from this offense. Because, look, there that's bagged. The only thing you're really dealing with that crosser. Um, the other issue with this is the delay fade. And let me, let, me talk, let me talk a little bit about that here at the end. And we'll come back to bunch tight end because this is going to be a multiple section thing. But delay f – and see, the thing is people don't run bunch tight end. Like, they run it just for the PB over, but they don't run it, run it. So delay fade should be as simple as – and I'm going to just kind of get this guy out of the way um, because he's going to be my user. So I'm going to blitz him because I just want clear. I want I want you to see what happens. So um, anyway, P boot over, roll out, and I want you to watch the tight end. And I didn't pass commit there. My bad. You have to have to pass commit. That's like really, really, really important. Okay, set it up. All right, now we're past me. Okay. So take a look at this. P boot over. Motion out. Watch the tight end delay. He's wide. He's, he's open. He's open is what I'm trying to say. Okay? The tight end is open. The solution, in my opinion... Is to take is to take your defensive line, shift them to the right side like this. This is going to help for inside zone, which we haven't even talked about that yet. You're going to sit right here, okay, with your user, and then obviously you're going to take a three rack. So you're going to put this guy Gary into a three rack bluff blitz, bluff blitz him, and that puts him in a three rack. And now I want you to watch the delay fade. Motion out. The match coverage does a good job, and you see that the three rack is waiting for him. Okay, the three rack is waiting for him. But not only, and I want you to, I want to come back to the left side here because there's two specific routes that are really problems from the tight end: the delay fade and the delay cross. So if you watch here, this is why seam flats are so good. Look at what he does. This is pee a bit over because there's no action here. He comes over here looking for work. So he's going to tackle. He may not make the play, but he'll tackle the tight end. So. For my money, if you want to stop bunch tight end, and again, I just don't like to I don't like to have to use her stuff personally. I got I feel like there's too much randomness in this game. But if you use her the cross route, like you should be good um, if you just did like this. And then the three wreck, and then you just use her in the middle of the field. And again, uh, PA boot over. Let me see if I can just cross him. Make sure you pass commit. And again, you're just going to go like this. You're going to go rear here, you know. And then you see here the delay fade is just kind of open. So uh, it's not. I mean, it's not open. You have a three wreck there, so it is what it is. But but that to me, for my money, is is one of the easiest ways to stop it. Another thing you could do is you could get really aggressive in your quarters, and you could basically blitz off the edge. Um, so you see here, we'll set up a little rush here, and this is P boot over. So we have the deal. We we're, we're dealing with stuff on the backside relatively well. You know what I mean? The only thing that you really have to deal with is if the tight end goes out on a route. But again, he's going to likely be on a delay fade, and they're going to double team this end. So the corner should come off the edge here clean. Uh, we're pass committing here, snap of the ball, and I like to come right through the a gap because it scares them a lot of times. And as you can see, you can get pretty instant pressure. So. Those are two defenses for PA boot over and bunch tight end. We'll dive more into this um, throughout this weekend, but bunch tight end is tough, man, and that's why I run it. I mean, it's a really, really good offense. So if you want to get the full defense, that link's in the description. Those are some thoughts on how to stop PA boot over, and if you have any questions, you can always hit me up via text.